Well, guys, I messed up. <laughs> so we did a live stream last night for about three hours, and I was struggling. We were trying to fix this board here. Um, this is for Precision 5560. Um, it would power off the battery, but you wouldn't be able to use the charger when it charged. Um, we isolated it down to a couple of these chips that control each one of the USB-C ports, um, and we changed them out, and it didn't fix the issue. And if you want to watch me struggle for about three hours, you can watch the live stream right here. Um, but I have to say that after the live stream ended, um, one of our viewers posted on the Discord channel um, that he noticed that I made a mistake. Um, and here's what the mistake is. My donor board had a different pinout than the board we were fixing. Um, I assumed that the boards had the exact same chips. I didn't even check. I, I've worked on these motherboards so many times, but there's two versions that are very, very similar. Most of the things are the same. And I guess they changed those chips on the next version. So um, let me show you what we're looking at here. So here's my customer's board. And this is the Precision 5560. It's also an XPS 9510, same motherboard. And this is our donor board that we used right here. Looks the same, same shape. A lot of the stuff's laid out the same. You can see a little bit of uh, things are different. The power circuitry is about the same right here. Still has a chipset here. Uh, the SSDs are in the same spot. Even the three volt and five volt power rails are in the same spot. Uh, CPU and GPU are in the same spot. Like all this stuff's the same, okay? But there are subtle differences if we compare the backs. We have um, some chips that aren't located in the same spot. We have our chipset still there. We even have our regulator chips in the same spot, the power management chips in the same spot. Um, the board numbers are definitely different on this because there is a little bit different layout. So the board that we were using as a donor board is actually the Precision 5550. It's a year older, and it's the same as the XPS 9500. Um, let me just show you what we're looking at. This is crazy. I, I just... It blew my mind. Um, so under the microscope, we're gonna look here. And so this is the area, these are the chips we took off. Um, so the way this works is we have two USB-C ports here. This is a donor board, so I've already stolen them, but USB-C plugs in here. Each one of these will go over to this PD controller. PD controller will negotiate it up to the 20 volts. And then the output will, uh, depending upon which port it is, will come over to one of these uh, kind of uh, MOSFET gate chips here. Uh, the 20 volts will be on one side, then we'll have an enable, and then the 20 volts will flow out, and then that will come and energize our main uh, power rail circuit that will uh, charge the battery and turn on the, the board and everything like that. Uh, what we're, issue we're having with the customer's board, which is this one, uh, we've already changed the chips out here, is we would get the voltage um, out of the PD controller chip, it would come here, but it would never come out of the back of this. And we could actually just jump across with a pair of tweezers. If we did this, the board would turn on. We just bypass the chip altogether. Um, so we determined that most likely one of these chips would be bad. But I mean, there's three of them on the board. There's one for each port. Um, we changed them out. It didn't fix the issue. Um, but if we actually look at the chips closely, here is the customer's original chip. It's a BL01. And the chip we put on there is a BC01. So different chip number. Didn't even pay attention to it. Um, but let me show you the pinout difference. Okay, so here's the customer's chip. Um, and here's the, the donor board we took it off of. So remember, the chips that are right here came off of this board. This chip, this chip came off of this board. But if we look at the pinout, as you can see, we have the 20 volt input is going to be on these two pins here, and then the 20 volt output is going to be on those two pins. Well, on this one, um, we have the same output, but the input's actually going to be on these middle pins. So the pin layout is completely different, and that's what. Um, and that's what one of my viewers had pointed out to me. Um, so whenever I got home that night, last night, I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that happened. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to pull these chips off here, um, which are the wrong chips, and we're going to put the correct ones on. These are, this is the one that actually came off of here, so we're not going to put this one back on. We're going to get a different donor board that is exactly the same. And I do have one right here, so we will be able to take one off, take them off of this. I do have three chips on here, I think, right? Yeah, so, oh, I'm already missing one on there. Let me grab another board. All right, here we go. Yeah, so this board still has the two right here and then the third one over here. So we have all three that we can take off and move over. Um, I'm gonna take them all off of this board though first because I wanna make sure um, that you know it, it could just be a issue with one of the chips that was messing with the other ones, but we need to kind of take them all off since they're all wrong at this point. And then I'll just transfer all these over. So let me remove their chips first. And these are gonna be good chips. They just actually go to the wrong machine, so. I'm going to set them off to the side and I'll save them. I'll bag them up and just make it, mark them down for 
uh, what model it goes to. And just so we can see the difference again, uh, this is our customer's board, this is our donor board. And the, the 20 volts from the charger is coming through here on these two pins, and the 20 volts from the charger is coming through those two pins. Completely different layout. The output's still here. Um, the navel line is probably different too. Yeah, all of this layout's completely different. So. We probably could have fixed this board in about 20 minutes. Instead, we spent three hours. And it's because of my uh, kind of tunnel vision. Plus, I'd already been here for 12 hours. But uh, hopefully, this will fix it up. So we got our BL01s. That's what we're going to put on here. All right, let me prepare the area. I need to put some fresh solder on here. So this is the first time that I've ever done this before. <laughs> and uh, I guess it was the first time for anything. And I guess it, it should have been a good indication that these all this circuitry would have been different because we PD controller chips were different. We knew that. And I noticed that right off the bat. But I never thought that these chips would have been different. And I don't have schematics or board views for this, so that's what makes it a little bit harder to deal with. But always double check, double and triple check, right? Measure twice, cut once. Okay, we have our three donor chips now. All right, pin one is there. So we're going to install this direction. I'm just going to tack them in place temporarily and then we will readjust them. We'll get all the extra solder out from underneath them. I'm going to use my soldering iron just to kind of grab this extra solder that was underneath there. Alright, so I'm going to add some more flux and we'll reflow it and then they should sit exactly where they want to sit. good and that one's good okay and one last one to change out uh, we haven't removed this one yet or did we yeah we already did okay so let me put this one on here orientation is going to be like that. All right, so we have them all installed. I'm just gonna clean up the area. Just wanna get all this extra flux off of here before it dries. When it cools off, it gets a, it's a little bit harder to clean up. So it's always good to do when the board's still warm. So I'm just using a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol. And this is just a chem pad. That just picks up the residue. Okay, 
Well, moment of truth. So, here we go. So I want you to keep an eye on the power meter. So what we were seeing earlier is it would just sit there at 0 0.02 and then it would never power on. So when we plug this in, it should automatically start jumping to more than an amp. So I got it plugged in. Boot it up, zero, 07, and it's coming on. So that port's working. Let's try this port, 0 0.05, 0 0.07, and one amp. That one's working. And then the last port, and that one's working too. So we resolved the issue, but it took me three hours of installing the wrong chip first. <laughs> and, but I'm so happy that we have people who can help us out. And uh, I'll put a link to our Discord server that you can join if you're interested in uh, getting some help yourself. And uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. And thanks for watching.